Hello, welcome back to our virology course. In this lesson, we are going to talk about another important family, which is called Paramyxoviridae family. In this family, we have a lot of viruses, which are characterized by having a single strand RNA as genome with a negative polarity, and um, they are about 150 to 300 nanometers big. Their structure is very similar to the Orthomyxoviridae family, but these viruses are more strong, so contagious and stronger. There are many different types of viruses belonging to this family. We have uh, Paramyxovirus, and belonging to paramyxovirus, we have, for example, four kinds of parainfluenza virus, and we also have paramyxovirus properly. The other kind of virus is morbillovirus. Then we have pneumovirus, uh, metapneumovirus, and henipa virus. So, parainfluenza viruses basically cause mild respiratory symptoms but they, um, they can also cause dangerous respiratory symptoms just in infants, in children, essentially. And what about parotitis virus? Parotitis virus belongs to paramyxovirus type. Uh, parotitis virus causes parotitis, also called malt disease. Uh, this is one of the most common infant disease and it is characterized by causing, essentially causing fever, um, flu-like symptoms, so general flu-like symptoms and they also cause the swollen of the parotitis glands. What are the complications? Well, mm, the main complications are uh, associated with the nervous system. They can also cause pancreatitis and orchitis, which is testicular or ovarian atrophy uh, that may lead to sterility, of course. This virus can also cause hepatitis symptoms. Fortunately, we have a vaccine which is trivalent and intraepidemic. Uh, the vaccine is uh, so made of, it's against, essentially against measles, against parotitis and against rubella. Measles virus causes another common infant disease which is called measles. Uh, as I told you, there is a trivalent vaccine, measles, MADS or parotitis and rubella. Uh, measles is one of the most uh, contagious and dangerous uh, disease. In fact, imagine that about one million children die in the third world every year because of this disease. Uh, the virus is able to replicate both in respiratory mucosa and in conjunctiva. Uh, then it enters the lymphatic system and it reaches uh, all the organism, all the tissues. The first symptom is the appearance of white, of white um, spots in the oral mucosa called coplic spots. Then, after some days, you can see uh, the maculopapular eruptions. The complications are essentially uh, pneumonia, meningitis, and it can also stay latent and cause a very dangerous disease called uh, subacute sclerosing panencephalitis. Uh, Imagine that it, it can cause this really dangerous disease in about 
eight years after uh, the classical disease called measles. So the person believed, okay, I recovered, I will never have this disease anymore, so I'm okay. Then, after eight years, it, the person dies because of this disease without knowing that it is caused by the, more, the measles virus that he or she got a lot of years before. Measles virus also causes hepatitis symptoms. So let's talk about respiratory sensorial virus and metapneumovirus essentially cause mild respiratory symptoms, so they are not so dangerous. And what about Hemipah viruses? These viruses uh, infected, uh, infected the human beings only recently, so our immune system hasn't had enough time to <clears throat> prepare itself against these, uh, these viruses. So the mortality associated with these viruses is really high, is about 57%. The reservoir is represented by fruit eating bats. Hendra virus was found in Australian horses while Nipah virus was found in Malaysian pigs. So the most important thing is to, mm, uh, to keep, sep keep these animals separated, Keeps, uh, keep fruit eating bats and pigs in Malaysia uh, such as fruit eating bats and horses in Australia separated from each other. Another important thing is to be careful of drinking uh, fruit juices not well sterilized uh, and then uh, I suggest, I always suggest peeling fruits before eating it or uh, cooking it at least because as you know heat Mm, heat tends to uh, kill and destroy every, every, not every, but the most part of microorganisms. I'll wait you in the next lesson where we'll be talking about another family called Picorna viride. See you, bye!